everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So preparations for Operation New Jersey are well underway, but for now I wanted to give a quick update on how the end of block 3 went for me, and also share some stats on my entire journey through Evolve Artists so far. So the first homework assignment I worked on after getting back from New Jersey and unpacking all the stuff in my new apartment was homework 17. and. I don't know, I feel like it was quite an event to have to set the easel back up, set up my art supplies, get the lighting, and all of that. And even after I set everything up, it was not ideal. Like in the last video, I told you about these new studio photography lights that I bought and how I was going to try to use them for painting because I don't have any lights at all inside the bedroom. And I need to paint in the bedroom to keep the cats away from all the painting stuff. But the lights, they're too bright and also not bright enough, like they glare on the canvas. And they're also not LEDs, so that made them really hot. I had no space in the bedroom, so I kept on like bumping the easel with the door every time I wanted to enter and leave. It was just not a very nice experience to do the painting in my like really impromptu setup. Like my previous setup, it definitely wasn't ideal like I was talking about in my New Jersey video, but it was at least somewhere that didn't block the door every time I wanted to enter and leave and something that I could just like wheel over to when I wanted to paint because it was right next to my desk. This time I had to like push my chair in and out of that room and it was just really inconvenient. That definitely made me want to paint a lot less. So conclusion, I guess this is probably really obvious, but when your setup is convenient, easy to access, nice to use, you want to paint more. Uh, since I now live right next to the lake by the beach, I decided, hey, maybe I should try to take it outside and paint for a while because in here it's like really hot, stuffy, uncomfortable, the lighting isn't great, so I'm like, if I take it outside and the lighting is weird, it can't really be much worse than what I have here. And I was really nervous because I'm pretty shy in real life, I'm scared of strangers. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be so prominent. People are all going to look at me and like judge me for what I'm doing. And my artwork is going to be so bad. And I don't know, all these thoughts. But I pushed myself to go out there. And uh, it didn't really go um, as I expected because my easel is like really big. It's not a travel sized easel. I had to carry my entire art cart out there. I had to bring my tripod so I could do a little bit of filming. By the time I got out there, it was already pretty late. So the light was fading. I didn't bring a chair because I was like, oh, I don't need a chair, I'll just stand. But it's really uncomfortable doing the Evolve homework exercises while standing because they require so much precision. And it was kind of a mess. <laughs> but it was really nice to be able to work outside, feel the nice lake breeze and the weather. I feel like it was able to take away a little bit of the FOMO that I have because part of me is like, oh, I miss the weather, you know? Like, what am I doing living at such a nice time, good temperature location if I don't get to enjoy it? Being able to do the homework and enjoy the area, that was really nice. Even taking along all the other discomforts that came along with it. So I finished homework 17. I thought it looked really nice. I tried really hard not to make the bowling pins shadow too dark so that it would like hinder my gradients. But then in the feedback, he said that my shadow was too light. So I'm still really not sure what to do about that. Really, really confused about doing values. So then the next one, the two dolphins painting, is the first one that made me like really, really nervous. I was like kind of psyching myself out. For the other ones, I've just been able to be like, oh, it looks difficult, but also really fun. Let's tackle it. And for the two dolphins, I'm like, oh my god, what if it's not good? Because I feel like that's one of the most iconic paintings in the entire program. I feel like I've seen so many other people's versions of it and they've always been super gorgeous, colorful. Some people even painted like the little fabric pattern in the background. I'm like, am I expected to do that? What if mine doesn't look as beautiful as theirs? Because it's kind of like the final exam, you know? It kind of shows that you really know what you're doing and that you learned everything and that you're able to accomplish the same quality that everyone else has been able to. So I was kind of freaking out about it. But time crunch, I really wanted to finish block three by the time I get to New Jersey, so I didn't have too much time to think about it and I got started. I feel like mixing up the dolphin color was surprisingly hard 
and I couldn't really figure out which part of the dolphin to be matching the color of because it feels like, you know, it's like a really shiny dolphin. I'm like, which part of this is the highlight and which part of it is like the base color of the dolphin. And for the first one, I ended up going too dark and too red. But when I first put it on the canvas, I was like, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily off. It could just be that I don't have like the context of like the background and like all the highlights and shadows in. So I'm just gonna finish this dolphin and then see where it is. The more I worked, I'm like, the more horrendously red it looked. So then I was stuck here. I had paint for two dolphins. I had one dolphin done, but it was the wrong color. I was like, what do I do? So I texted Kevin. I was like, what do I do? The color is wrong. He said, well, if you know that the color is wrong, don't paint the other dolphin in that same wrong color. He gave me some advice on how to mix the color. Uh, I did it. I did the other dolphin. I did the base. I'm like really proud of the base, actually. It looks so complicated in the photograph, but when I just went from left to right adding in all the highlights and shadows like within the shadows and whatever it actually came out pretty nicely which kind of surprised me but also didn't because i don't know if the process has worked for everything so far why wouldn't it work for this anyway so by the end of the dolphins i realized that it was still too dark and the colors weren't quite right but then i just went along and finished up the rest of it because I felt like there wasn't really much that I could do to fix it at this point anyway. Looking at the final painting, I feel like it looks really nice as long as you don't compare it with anyone else's painting or the original photograph that it's based on. I don't know. I'm like kind of confused by these latest Evolve homeworks because they say that you should only be within like a half step up or a half step down, but then I look at other people's paintings and they're just like bright like blinding highlights and whatever so i'm like what am i supposed to be matching here i don't know i guess i'm just a little bit confused as to what i'm expected to do because if i don't add like an obscene amount of white paint to like the color the highlights barely show up for me so i don't know if i'm painting it wrong or what but in the end it was done and I got pretty good feedback on it, on everything except for the color mixing and the values. <laughs> so basically I can fill in the colors real well. I just can't match anything from the photo. But I do feel a bit disappointed because part of me was like, I mean, we all went through the same course, so I should be able to paint something that looks just as dazzling and beautiful as everybody else who came before me, you know? And just seeing them side by side and how like inferior mine looks, I feel a bit disappointed. On the other hand, I feel like all the tools were given to me, you know, looking at other people's beautiful paintings. I'm like, yeah, you know, I can see how they did that, right? It's not like a mystery. But on the other hand, I just, I feel like when the tools are in my hands, I just like fumble them and I can't access them properly and implement them which is really frustrating um but on the other hand like i've come so far right like if you told me a year ago that i'd be able to paint something like this there's no way i would have believed that but now that i'm here it doesn't feel like enough right i feel like this is what everybody says like when you're an artist no matter how good you get you always feel like there's room for improvement and you're never happy with it, which is frustrating. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have time to really dwell on this again because time crunch. So last homework of block three, I'm supposed to choose my own subject to do a still life of. And looking at everybody else's still lives just was completely paralyzing because I just felt like it looked so beautiful and I just didn't have the confidence within myself to do anything like that. I looked at my bookshelf and I saw this loot box from Overwatch. And I feel like for every homework assignment up until now, I've been kind of looking at it and then dismissing it as something that I could paint, right? Because like there's so many colors. It's just like this random bit of orange. Do I really want to, you know, mix up a whole new color just for this little bit? There's like tons of geometric lines and little shading bits and all sorts of stuff. But I was like, 
you know what, I bet I could give it a try. I bet I might be able to do it. And I just really don't have time to go around for an hour again, like looking for more stuff to paint. I feel like I've looked at every single object in this entire household. Um, and well, so I just set up my box and whatever. Uh, I set up super janky because I wanted to stream it. So I had streamed the early part of this painting where I did like the shadows and the color mixing. Um, so I needed to be right next to my computer. And I needed to set up my shadow box and the lamp and it's just, I don't know, it was really something. So as I was putting the first strokes of color onto the canvas, I was like freaking out because I felt like it looked so bad. I don't know, like at the beginning of every single one of these still life paintings where I don't have like the traced image on the canvas, just absolute nerves freaking out. <laughs> like it's just not fun. Like it's a lot more fun to like shape the painting and render it and make it look beautiful after all the bones are already in but making that structure in the first place is just so nerve-wracking. And I'm just like, does this feeling ever go away? You know, will I always feel this insane amount of stress every time I start one of these paintings? And part of me is like, yeah, I mean, it should, because before I used to stress out about doing gradients, and I used to stress out about mixing colors, and I used to stress out about whatever, and now I don't really stress out about that anymore. So, Theoretically, one day I'll stop stressing out about painting stuff from life as well. But when you're still in that mood of feeling stressed out about it, it feels like it'll never go away. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll watch this video in a year and be like, wow, I wish it were still those days when I worried about such petty things. Uh, and that would be great because that means I would have grown uh, by the end. I feel like it was looking pretty good. I do regret not being more precise with the top part of the box because then it started to look weird by the time I finished it and I had to keep going back and it sort of contaminated the white paint, which was problematic. And also I'm not sure if I should have picked something so like geometric um, where something is clearly off if the perspective is off because I was about halfway through the painting when I realized Ooh, I don't think that all the lines, all the straight lines add up on each face, but by that point it was way too late to fix anything structurally about the painting. That was kind of stressful knowing that every mark I made was in the wrong spot, but I couldn't really do anything about it. So I think that's just a lesson to me next time. Spend more time in the beginning so then you will cry less later on. Anyway, overall, I am pretty happy with this painting. Like when I first finished it, I was like, oh my God, it looks so bad. Some of the paint looks streaky. Like the colors are weird. The perspective is all off. I don't even know how this happened. But looking back on it now, I'm just like, hey, I mean, it looks pretty darn nice. Like there's all sorts of little details in there that I never even would have seen before I did Evolve. Right? Like, they're the kind of details I appreciate in other people's work where I'm like, wow, they even got the little reflection there and like the little thing there. But if I were drawing something, it's something that I would totally just gloss over because I'm like, oh, it seems unimportant. I could never do all those itty bitty details anyway. But now that I feel like, you know, I can and I am capable of doing them and I did do them, I see how much they add to the piece. Just like, you know, the little bit of darkness on like the curved bit of the box and a little bit of highlight here and a little bit of shadow there and it really, you know, makes it pop, brings it together. I feel really proud of it. So Dimitri has been grading most of my homeworks in block three and he's been really hard on me. Okay, maybe he's not really hard on me. Maybe he's just a normal amount of hard on me. But every single painting I've submitted has had some sort of, you know, constructive bit that I could improve on. And it was kind of frustrating, not because he's like saying mean things or anything, but just because I felt like I wasn't improving enough and I could never do things well enough. But surprisingly, he said that this last painting was pretty good and that made me really, really happy. I feel like it was such a good note to end block three on. Something that's been um, 
something I've been nervous to do. I felt like I would never be able to paint it and I finally conquered it, uh, which is a really nice feeling. So I am going to make an Evolve confession. I skipped one of the videos in the lessons. So for a while in block three, like after you get through the highlights and reflections and whatever, every homework is just do more of what you did before. Choose a new subject, do a painting, do the next photograph, do another painting, right? So I sort of got into the habit of not really having to watch any more lesson videos. So before every painting, I would just go on the website on my phone, check that there were no videos and then get started. Well, one day I must have been really busy or something. I checked there was a new lesson video and I was like, oh, I'll just do it later. So I just got all my painting stuff set up anyway. I did it and I forgot about the video. Every once in a while I would think, huh, wasn't there that one video I was supposed to watch? And then I just didn't watch it all the way until now after I finished homework 20. And now I'm like, you know, now's probably a good time to go back and watch it. I feel like I don't know, I guess I was okay with skipping it um, <laughs> to do more homeworks in block three, but going into block four, I wanted to, you know, the completionist in me, I, I need to finish all the videos. So I went back and watched it. Basically, they were tips on how to get better color mixes. They said, be sure to reach out for help if you need it. Uh, try different combinations of colors, even if you don't think they'll work, just to get that experience and see what it's like. They also said to check your color mixes by putting the color on a spare piece of canvas, like the shadow and the light next to each other, just to see their relationship and compare it to the photo or compare it to the still life. And when I heard that, I'm like, confusion. How does that even work? Because they give you the exact number of canvases you need for the homeworks inside the boxes. So I'm like, what spare canvas would I be using? I happen to have some because I did some painting before, but I don't know, did they expect me to go out and buy some more canvases? Uh, there's like one extra canvas in the foundation blocks. And that's because they give you 20 canvases for block one and there are 20 paintings. However, paintings one and two are on like the same canvas. So you have one extra for like all four of these blocks. I'm just confused. I don't know. I felt like this was not important enough to like send an email or schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, but if anyone's watching this, hello. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I feel like if I had watched this video sooner and actually used these tips, I might have just tried to use like a piece of computer paper or something. I know it's not the same, but I don't know. I don't want to buy new canvases just to use them as scratch paper. But maybe I should, maybe that's helpful, not sure. But the biggest takeaway from this video that I skipped, unfortunately, was that you don't need anything else other than evolve at this point. You should not be looking at external color theory or anything like that. And um, I'm sad <laughs> that I missed this video because it would have calmed my mind. There was a live stream with Kevin where he was like, a color theory book that I really like is blah, blah, blah. And I was like, ooh, should I get that book? That seems really useful, but you know, it's really more of an advanced resource for after you already know how to mix colors and stuff. Yeah, so this video by Piper, she was like, don't worry about color theory, don't read any books, don't take any courses or videos. Right now, we're just trying to get that level of experience and understanding just in your brain. And then, you know, after you understand it and know it, you'll be able to actually utilize these color theory resources and knowledge in a way that you can't just by like, reading. So yeah, that would have helped me and I wouldn't have had to spend all this brain power going back and forth between whether I should get it, should I not? Just don't. Evolve is all you need. So at this point, when I finished block three, I was still under the impression that Kevin wanted me to finish a couple paintings in block four before I went to New Jersey. So I jumped right into the first couple videos and Block four is really interesting. I know there are a couple resources on Evolve and stuff where they walk you through what goes on in every block, just so you know what you're gonna get into before you get there. I never looked at any of them. I don't know, like, I just felt like I wasn't that interested in it because when I get there, I'll get there and I don't have time to look at stuff that isn't what I need to be doing right now. 
but it might have been good to know. So block four, we learn a new technique that utilizes everything that we've learned so far, like the gradients, the color mixing, the proportional drawing, and instead of doing the shadows, then the lights, and then blending it all together, you start from the very dark, and then you move all the way to the very lightest parts of the painting. That sounds crazy. I didn't get far enough into the videos to see how they actually do that, but I'm just like, whoa, that's new. And instead of doing like the limited value range that we were doing for the grayscale paintings, now we're matching the photographs exactly. And we get to use pure white and pure black and everything in the middle. That sounds pretty crazy too. I don't know. Yeah, so he said that at this point, we're going to be making like truly professional looking stuff. Hmm? Exciting. Oh, also there are only eight assignments in this block which shocked me because there's a pattern, you know? Like there's been 20 homeworks in each block up until this point. Last one only has eight. And for every assignment, there are a couple photographs that you get to choose from. Oh, and in this assignment, every homework is gonna be from a photograph. So that's some info about block four. I only got like two videos in when Kevin said, Actually, you don't need to do any of block four. We'll just get started with that when you get here. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So then I just stopped watching the videos. I'm kind of glad that he didn't tell me that until after I was done with block three because I was only working so fast on block three because I thought that I would need to do block four too. And if you told me that I had a longer time to do block three, then I, I might not even be done now at this point. My, um, my discipline and time management skills not the best. So if I feel like I have less time to do it, then I'll do it in less time. If I feel like I have more time to do it, I'll do it in more time. Eh. Anyway, yes, that's my end of block three experience. So let's go through some stats of my entire Evolve Artist journey so far from blocks one to now. So my first homework assignment I did on August 20th, 2020. And my last homework assignment of block three, I did on August 22nd, 2021. So it took me one year and two days to finish the first three blocks of Evolve Artist. Overall, I took 307 hours to finish the first three blocks. Uh, this is a bit slower than I thought I would be able to do, right? Because I was planning on doing all four blocks and being started on block five by now, because it's like the expected pace that you're gonna get through it within a year. I don't know, life happens. Like there were multiple months within the past year where I didn't do any painting. So I'm pretty proud of myself for even getting through all this. I'm not very good at finishing things just in my life. This is like the first thing I've ever finished, which exciting. My fastest painting was block two homework 12 at two hours and 33 minutes. It's really small. I did not like how it turned out. It was, it was a real struggle, it was a real mess. Did not like that one. Second fastest painting was block three, homework six at three hours and three minutes. I don't really like this one either. I don't know, I feel like I picked too simple of a subject. The colors don't look great. Something happened with the shadows. I don't know why I picked like an extreme shadow and a moderate shadow for one object. It was a struggle. My longest painting was block one, homework three, at 13 hours and six minutes. I don't know what took me so long to finish this one. I did this one over five days. Um, I, I was very dedicated. I don't even know how I got through it. Second longest painting was block one, homework six at nine hours and nine minutes. That was because I decided it would be a good idea to paint the shadows, then paint the lights, and then just leave overnight before doing the gradients. Um, and I spent the entire four hours the next day just trying to fight with this like semi dried up gloopy paint um, until I just gave up. That was not fun. So conclusion here is that the longest paintings I did weren't because they took a long time, it's because I was doing them wrong. On average, over all 60 homeworks, they took about five hours each, 
but the first half of block two, like the first 10 homeworks are just drawings and no paintings. So if I take those out, then every painting took about six hours on average. If you divide the 307 hours by the 357 days it took me to finish, then that's about 50 minutes per day over the course of the year. And like I said, that was definitely not like a slow steady march toward the finish line. There were months where I did no painting and there were weeks where I did like 20 hours a week. I just found the time when I could get it and I tried to take advantage of it as much as I could. As the paintings got more complex, I was afraid that they would start to take forever to get through, especially since like the paintings at the end of block one were already taking me like five, six, seven, eight hours. I was like, oh my God, if I have to add in color and like mixing and drawing, they're gonna take me like 20 hours or something. But that didn't really happen. If I look at the final exam paintings for each block, they all took about the same time but they all increased in complexity and increased in the amount of stuff I was expected to do. I just got faster at the earlier stuff. At the end of block one, homework 19 took seven hours and three minutes, and homework 20 took seven hours and 34 minutes. That was just tracing, filling it in, and then rendering it. Then at the end of block two, I had to make my own drawing of the still life subjects, then fill in and render everything. So the same stuff as block one, but more steps. And still, homework 19 took 8 hours and homework 20 took 5 hours and 44 minutes. Then for block 3, we alternated between doing tracings and doing paintings from life. So for the ones from life, I had to make the drawing, mix all the colors, fill them in, and render the painting. And still, homework 19, which was traced, only took me 8 hours and 20 minutes, and homework 20 took me 5 hours and 37 minutes. I feel like the improvement in what I've been able to accomplish in about 8 hours has been crazy. Going from filling in trace lines to painting a full-on color still life. And I was able to do this in one year while working full-time and passing two actuarial exams. And it convinced me enough to uproot my entire life just to see what the sequel would look like when I can really dedicate myself to it. If you want to see the stats for all my paintings in blocks one through three, I'm going to post them on my blog just as like a chart so then you can do your own data analysis on it, just look at it, see what I did. You can find the link below. Of course, this is nothing to try to compare yourself to or beat or feel bad about if it's different from your numbers in any way. I'm just like really annoyed whenever I ask someone, hey, what's a typical time to finish this? And they're like, oh, there is no typical time. It depends on blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, I just wanna know like a number. So if you just wanna know a number like me, I'll post them all below. I feel like everything has started to really hit me and feel real all of a sudden, especially since my last day of work was last week. I'm just here like, wow, I have no more paychecks. All of a sudden, I'm realizing everything I'm gonna be missing out on by moving away and how much I really love it here, like the Sunday farmer's market and living right here by the beach and the lake this wonderful apartment that we just moved to, the cats, my boyfriend and I having to be long distance, weekly D&D &D sessions with my friends, the awesome public transit system. I don't know, they were all just part of my life, you know? So I didn't really appreciate them that much. And now I'm just like, damn, I'm really gonna miss all this. But on the other hand, I'm in such a lucky position where I am leaving all this stuff to go and do something fun and that I'm passionate about and I get to come back, which I am just so grateful for. And I'm happy to have this opportunity to appreciate this stuff in a different way as if I were leaving, but not actually having to leave. Anyway, so my roommate, who is also gonna be doing the Evolve Artists full-time program, She's already in New Jersey setting up the apartment. I'm gonna be joining her next week. Then classes start the week after that. And it's gonna be a very exciting year. <laughs> and I'll be sharing all about it here. This was supposed to be a quick update and it turned really long as usual, but thank you everyone so much for your support. When I first started this channel, I had no idea that this is where I would be in life at this point, but I'm just 
so excited to be able to be here to experience it. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work. Thank you.